Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. In this video, we'll create a magnifying glass shader. I won't explain how pixel distortion works in general because I already did so in video 20 about tunnel distortion. So I recommend to watch that tutorial first if you haven't already. And this time I also won't explain the maths, simply because I don't understand it really. But as always a short disclaimer first. This tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths, so if you see any mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem, please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. Let's first talk about how this is going to work. First we'll be drawing an image of a map to an application surface. Then we'll draw a part of it to a surface the size of the magnifying glass. The next step is to draw that lens surface back to the application surface by a shader. The shader will distort the image to make it look like seen through a magnifying glass. After that, we'll draw the glass and frame to the application surface and we'll add some highlights in blend mode add. Then we'll make sure only a circle of the lens surface is drawn and then we'll add some optional effects like a chromatic aberration and color adjustments like contrast, saturation and gamma. Now let's have a look at the project file which is linked in the description beneath this video. We've got a magnifying glass sprite, highlights and a focal area sprite, a map will draw to the application surface and the same map in a higher resolution. I've set this one to a width of 2048 pixels so it would fit one 2K texture page. Of course, it could be larger than that if you increase the texture page size at the cost of performance and compatibility. Then here's the magnifying glass shader. The vertex shader is just a simple pass-through shader without the vertex color. The magic happens inside the fragment shader. We'll get to that later though. And this is the object with the magnifying glass sprite already set. We'll go through the code of both the shader and the object in a minute. And here's the room. On the main instance layer is the magnifying glass object and on the background layer is the smaller map sprite. The rest is as usual just for camera inputs and GUI of the demo project. So let's get to the code inside the object. In the create event first. In the title region is a description for this demo project. It's not needed for the shader to work. In the sprite and shader region I first set up the remaining four sprites. The small map, the large map and the focus overlay sprite. Then to create the surface we'll need to find the scale factor to get from the smaller to the larger map sprite. We'll also need to know the size of the lens which in my case is about 64 pixels less than the sprite. And we'll often need half of that as well. And of course we'll need a surface to distort. Then I'm also setting up the shader with its uniforms. The first three uniforms are needed for the distortion and the remaining four uniforms are there to set the aberration and adjust the color, so they're optional. In the GUI region I'm just setting up things for the demo project. I'm defining a move region to keep the glass from overlapping with the GUI on the right side of the demo project. I'm hiding the cursor because the magnifying glass will be our cursor and I set up the slider captions and standard values for the demo project. And the step event is for the demo only as well. I'm locking the magnifying glass to the move region and turn off the cursor if the mouse is within the move region and turn it on if not. And in the room end event I just turn on the cursor no matter what. The draw event is empty and just there so I can decide myself when the magnifying glass sprite is drawn. But the important part is inside the draw end event. First I'm grabbing the demo project slider values. Zoom 1 and 2 will range from negative 1 to positive 1 and zoom 3 will range from 0 to 2. The aberration size will range from negative to positive 0.1 and the color adjustments will range from 0 to 2 or 0 to 3. But of course you can choose other ranges and experiment yourself. Now in the main part I commented out several code blocks for now. I'll bring them in step by step later. In our first run we'll ignore the fact that we got a larger map and just use whatever's on the application surface. So we'll create a surface as large as the lens. Then we set the surface as target and draw the part of the application surface to the lens surface. Meaning we need the instances X and Y minus half the lens size minus view X and Y position to get the upper left corner on the application surface. Set the lens size as width and height of that surface part we're drawing and draw the application surface part to zero zero on the lens surface. After that, we can reset the render target. Once we got the lens surface, we need to draw it distorted back to the application surface. So we're setting the shade and pass in the zoom uniforms. We'll skip the aberration and color adjustments for now and bring them in later. 
Then we can draw the lens surface at the instances X and Y minus half the lens size. And since my demo project is usually drawing without the linear texture interpolation, the distorted image would look kinda ugly. That's why I turned the interpolation filter on before drawing the surface and off again after. I'll skip the rest of the code here as well, we'll get back to that later as well. So let's have a look at the fragment shader. As in the object's draw end event, I've removed some code for now to show how the shader is built up and to show what code is doing what and which parts are optional. We won't need the vertex color, so like in the vertex shader we can remove it here. And we need to declare the uniforms for the distortions and color. However, once you've found the settings of your shader, you should remove the uniforms and either use constants or macros like here. Now inside the main function, like in any distortion fragment shader, we first need to calculate the sample coordinate we're going to take the sample from instead of from VV text chord. And since the distortion is based on the distance of the current fragment to the center of the surface, we first need to calculate that distance. So we're getting the length of the current fragment's texture coordinate minus 0.5. The next two lines are the algorithm for the magnifying distortion. I already mentioned I cannot explain exactly how it works, but let's look at the parts I do get. This is the lens surface and the yellow dot is the current fragment. Now since this is a circular effect, it's based on the distance of the fragment to the center of the surface. So we need to calculate this distance with the length function. And since the distance doesn't depend on the angle, I've also marked the sample coordinate if we ignore the angle with a dashed line. Next we can calculate an offset based on zoom 1, 2 and 3. That's the part I can't explain and just have to accept it does work. Now we need to get the angle of the fragment on the texture coordinate system. And then we can turn the offset by that angle. The result is the texture coordinate where we're going to pick the sample color from instead of from VV text chord. So if this is the surface, then this will be the distorted result. It's pretty similar to what we did in the tunnel distortion shader, just a different and circular offset algorithm. Now instead of calculating the angle and then turning the offset by this angle to get the sample coordinate, we could instead normalize the vector from the center to the fragment and multiply that by the offset. Now of course normalizing a vector of zero length can't work, but as far as I know the GPU will just return zero when that happens. And zero is exactly what we want here, because the only fragment that could happen with is the central fragment, and that's the only fragment not being offset at all. So I prefer this solution. Now all that's left to do before the first test run is getting the base color from the new sample coordinates and then pass that color to GL frac color. So let's run this. This works already. The application surface is magnified wherever the lens surface is and the zoom settings change the way the surface gets distorted. But what I don't like is the pixelation. We're basically doing a digital zoom hence the pixelation despite the linear texture interpolation filter being turned on. So my dirty solution for this is drawing a part of the larger map sprite to the lens surface instead of a part from the application surface. But if you're magnifying parts of the game, you'll either have to accept the pixelation or be more creative than that. So back in the object's draw end code, I'll remove the code block where we create the lens surface and draw a part of the application surface onto it. And I'll bring in the code block where we create a larger surface and draw a part of the larger map onto that. This means the surface dimensions need to be multiplied by the map scale factor. Then we need to use draw sprite part instead of draw surface part. We're drawing the larger map sprite and we need to multiply the coordinates of the upper left corner of that part and the lens size by the map scale factor as well. And further down within the shader block we now can't just draw the surface as it is. We need to draw it scaled down to lens size. Now if we run this again and compare this with the previous result, it looks a bit pixelated, but it's a lot better already. Of course, as mentioned, the larger the map is, the more detailed it will be, but the more texture memory you'll need, unless you get creative with how you implement this. Now let's add the magnifying glass and run again. So now we can see where this is going, but I think it looks a bit dull still. So let's also draw that focus sprite in blend mode add on top. Now this looks better and more interesting, but of course it makes everything a bit less readable. So decide for yourself if you want something like that or rather not. The next part we need to fix is only drawing a circle of the lens surface so the corners outside the magnifying glass won't show. We'll do that inside the fragment shader. And this is really simple actually. 
we'll mix the base colors alpha with zero by a step function. If the distance of the fragment to the center is 0.5 or less, the step will return zero and thus the mix will return the base color alpha. But if the distance is more than 0.5, the step will return one and thus the mix will return zero, rendering the fragment invisible. So if we run this again, we'll see the corners of the lens surface are cut off. Much better. Now to add some color effects. The first one being a chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is something that always happens when magnifying with a lens. The more accurately shaped the lens is, the less it will occur. A good photo lens will hardly show any aberration at all, but I'm simulating an old cheap lens, so I want some aberration. Besides, it just looks cool. Let me show in an image software what we're going to do. This is the base color on the lens surface. We'll take that base sample and multiply it with a dark yellow 0.5, 0.5, 0.33. Then we take a sample a bit offset from the original and multiply it with a dark magenta 0 0.5, 0.0, 0 0.33 and add that color to the dark yellow color. Then we again take a sample a bit offset in the other direction and multiply it with a dark cyan 0 0.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.33 and add that as well. The result will kind of look like a chromatic aberration. Comparing this to the original color you can see the value is always about the same. The reason is simple. If you look at the three color vectors I multiplied with, you'll notice I picked those colors so that each channel adds up to a value of 1. So from top to bottom the red channel is 0 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. The green channel is 0 0.5 plus 0 plus 0 0.5. And the blue channel is 3 times a third. This means you can pick other colors if you like, just make sure each channel has a sum of 1. So back to the project. In draw end event we now need the aberration uniform. And inside the shader after the circular stencil we can now do what I showed in the image software. First we need the distance and multiply it with the aberration factor. Now typically the chromatic aberration is stronger the farther away a pixel is from the center. Which is why we're squaring the distance. Like this the aberration will be zero at the center. Then we're multiplying the base colors RGB with dark yellow. Take another sample shifted by the aberration distance and multiply it by a dark magenta. And then take a third sample shifted by negative aberration distance and multiply it by a dark cyan. Adding up those colors will be our new color. So let's run this again and see what it looks like. You can see the aberration, especially close to the glass frame and especially where strong contrasts are. But the chromatic aberration also blurs the image, so I'd keep it rather subtle. It'll look good anyways. Now the last effect to add are the remaining color adjustments. We did those several times before in this tutorial series and there's even a whole video specifically for these, so I'm not going to explain them at all. In the draw end event I'm just passing the uniforms to the shader and inside the fragment shader I'm adding the adjustments as well. Now let's run this one last time and play with those sliders a bit. Now we finally got a pretty flexible magnifying glass shader, we can adjust the colors, the aberration and the zooming and find a setting we like. Once you've found your settings though, you won't need them to be dynamic anymore. So as in all shaders, try to replace as many uniforms with constants or macros to increase performance. I hope you liked this tutorial, I sure had some fun creating this effect. And in the next videos I plan to show some simple heat haze, flag distortion and flame distortion using maps instead of complicated math. Until next time.